Hey, what is up you guys and welcome to this episode of Eddie's Customs and Restorations. If you have an Audi Q7 and you're smelling gas, there is a high chance that you have this exact same leak which is very dangerous. It's in a very dangerous location. So you see down there where it leaks down to, it is basically on top of your exhaust. So that area that I'm about to point to right there, uh, that's essentially the hottest part of your engine. And you can also see the residue that the gas would leave when it would burn off. Now due to the severity of the safety hazard that this is, there is a service recall that was posted by Audi where they will fix this issue at no cost. Now here I'm simply removing the plenum cover just so I can have a little more room to work with back there. Now all those are are basically little spring loaded metal clips. Uh, you just pop them out as I did and other than that you have a series of press on retainers along the center of the plenum cover and that right there are those push on retainers I was referring to. Now just a quick note you do not have to remove the oil fill cap. Uh, I only removed it because in my experience most of the time when I remove plenum covers I generally always have to remove the oil fill cap. Uh, but in this case you don't have to so if you haven't already done so just letting you know you don't have to remove the oil fill cap now in order for me to assess this problem properly i generally like to wipe down the area uh, just so i can get a clearer view of where the base of the problem is more than likely coming from and we have this rubber sheath or cover kind of covering this uh this fuel connection here so I went ahead and just kind of pulled it back. I just kind of pushed it back and, and rolled it out of the way. Uh, that one that I'm holding there with my fingers, that's the one I'm referring to right there. So I just pushed it up just so I can have a better hold on this line. Now I located the source to this leak being at this connection and there's always a little O-ring in that connection in there. So we're gonna go ahead and push in on the line as I did so right there. So again, we're going to simultaneously push in on the line and also push in on that black plastic. And while pushing the black plastic, you wanna pull on the hard metal line. Now while looking into, now looking into the female end here, you can see that there is a rubber O-ring up inside there. Now for this, you're going to need a little metal pick, uh, preferably with a little hook. This one can be sharp. However, when we go in and replace this O-ring, you're going to need to push the, the new one in. In which case, having a pointed pick would not be a good idea because we could damage the new O-ring. Now fortunately for me, I have a ton of O-rings in this bag. So I went ahead and just found a size that matched up to the one that came out of there. Now one thing to keep in mind is the material of the O-ring that you get. Although all O-rings pretty much look the same, the type of rubber that they are made up of does differ. So make sure that you get a fuel rated O-ring. So in most common cases, uh, the green O-rings, the white O-rings, brown and yellow are generally made of this material called Viton, which is fuel compatible. So as you can already tell, this is not exactly the easiest task. Um, you will fight with this O-ring, which is why it's important that you do not have a sharp edge. Because you are going to be kind of pushing it in there, uh, this, uh, this pick of mine has a dulled point. So it's not damaging the O-ring in any way. So I'm simply just trying to roll it into its spot, which I was not successful doing on camera. But here's a view of the O-ring being in its place when I was finally able to get it in there. Um, but just be patient with it and it'll just fall into place. Now simply reconnect your hose. And after you feel the click, give it a good pull out just to ensure that it doesn't come out. Now before putting everything back together, let's go ahead and start the vehicle and make sure we don't have any leaks. Now that we've verified that there's no leaks, we can go ahead and put everything back together.
Now, on a quick side note, if you would like to send us a little something our way, YouTube now has a super thanks option that is right below this video. So just to make sure this connection stays stationary and true, just make sure you push in the hoses into their retainer brackets. Then reinstall your plenum cover starting from the back to the front, push firmly on the center, and fasten the cover from the sides with the side locks by simply pulling up and then pressing as closest to the center as possible on the locks.